First, let no one rule your mind or body. Take special care of your thoughts and remain unfettered. Give men your ear, but not your heart. Show respect for those in power, but do not follow them blindly. Judge with logic and reason, but comment not. Consider none your superior, whatever the rank or station in life. Treat all fairly, or they will seek revenge. Be careful with your money, hold fast your beliefs, and others will listen. What's up, bookworms? Welcome to a new segment of Let's Discuss, where today we will be talking about something that has become somewhat of a weird debate within the fantasy community the past decade plus, and that is Christopher Paolini's Inheritance Cycle series. If this is your first time finding the channel, I want to let you know that while my book reviews are full of spoilers, my Let's Discuss segments are 100% spoiler-free outside of something maybe you could read on the synopsis of a book sleeve. Um, let me get into the nuts and bolts here of how I was first introduced to this series. Uh, I was, I think, it was during the time of much frustration, really, as a reader. I was in what at that time felt like the eternity of a wait, which is hilarious now with some of these series I read and the wait in between the books. But it felt like an eternity waiting for uh, the book to come after Harry Potter uh, and the Goblet of Fire, and that was, of course, Order of the Phoenix. At the time, I don't think we even knew what the name of the book was, but we was waiting for book five of Harry Potter, and I was just completely frustrated. I was looking for something new to read, and I was at a Barnes & Noble uh, looking for something new to kind of scratch that itch while I waited, and I saw this in cap about this book called Aragon that apparently uh, this author's family had self-funded because, no, you know, he didn't get a book deal or whatever, but, you know, it, it was at a Barnes & Noble at this point. So it was newly published by, a, a, I think, Knopf or something. I can't even think of what they were called. But it was a book called Aragon, a high fantasy book about a boy and his dragon. I kind of read the cover, and I wasn't really too much interested. Uh, I liked the cover. It had a really cool-looking dragon on it. I mean, I mean cool-looking, I guess, if you want to say it. At the time, I mean, this was like 2003 we're talking about here. And... Uh, Someone about my same age came up to me in the store, made eye contact, and said, are you worried that it's just a kid's book? Uh, I nodded. Yeah, I, I think so. And he said something that I will never forget. He said, it is no more of a kid's book than Harry Potter is. So here I was at the time, 25, and here I am waiting for a Harry Potter book and I act like I'm too old to buy a book about a boy and his dragon, right? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. It was like he read my mind. That was something that I had been like, okay, you know, I'd been ridiculed at the time for some of my friends. And look, look, the, the first movie of Harry Potter had just come out. There were still a lot of people uh, at my age, that time, 25, that were like, oh, that's just, that's just silly kid stuff. Nobody cares about that. Me, I wasn't as, you know, allergic to YA like I am these days. So I, I would read them for sure. It wasn't a big deal. Uh, but it wasn't where you had people like now that are in their 40s reading Harry Potter for the first time. It was still kind of, you had the, the of course, the younger fans. But you had the, the middle ones. They're kind of like keeping on, shh, don't let anybody know that I'm reading these kid books or whatever. So I, I was kind of like that. I didn't want anybody to know, oh, I'm not going to buy this book that says it's a, you know, a, a high school reading level I'm, I'm too good for that whatever but that guy really sold me uh so if, uh whoever that is out there if you ever end up stumbling upon this video you inspired me long story short i read the book and i really enjoyed it i read it in a few days uh, it really scratched that itch i had for something new to read at the time little did i know it would be three years before i got that next book so but you know i had order of the phoenix finally so i didn't stress about it really but it wasn't right until about right before the release of Eldest in 2005 that I saw an interview on, um, <laughs> this tells you how long ago it was, on AOL. AOL had a, a thing about interview with, uh, you know, the writer of Aragon and Eldest. And, and I'm like, okay, cool. I want to know a little bit more about this author. And I was blown away. It showed Christopher uh, Paolini and this cat was like 12 years old, man. I'm, I mean, not really 12, but I mean, he looked young. I think he was about 20 at this point. But still, I mean, I was just floored that this dude was a published and already successful author as a teenager. But uh, but skipping to the end of the story, 
I, I kind of fizzled out a little bit on Eldest, and I honestly, I never finished it. A lot of universe building in this way that the first book didn't have. Uh, at this point, you could tell, okay, he, he's got a he's got a hit series, so he's going to kind of try to branch this out a little bit. Um, at the time, I wasn't looking for that, you know. I, I thought at the time I was still, I only want like a huge, wide universe with Lord of the Rings. That was enough for me. I didn't need anything like this on this. I hadn't read Wheel of Time yet. Uh, I don't even know if Brandon Sanderson was a thing at this point. I don't think he was. So, uh, yeah, I wasn't used to authors that really just try to create new languages and, and just made a huge world, and you had to study a map to kind of keep up with them. Obviously, you might be laughing, thinking, dude, that book, this book is not that complex. It's not. It's not. But at the time, I was apprehensive to get into anything like that with my fantasy. I was still a ve- Lord of the Rings and nothing else. That's what I was with fantasy at the time. I didn't want to read anything else. Uh, but, you know... Right after this, I got into like you know Discworld and Sword of Truth and and Shinar and all that stuff. So I mean, I I, I want to say this was the kind of the book that made me more receptive to stuff like that. Uh, like I said, I never finished. I got the, got off the course here. Like I said, I never finished Eldest. Uh, to this day, I've still never finished. I've still never made it past about this far <laughs> in the series. Uh, but it was the girl I was dating at the time, about twelve years back who turns out to be my wife now, by the way. But she saw the first two books on my shelf, and she decided to read them, and she absolutely loved them. Uh, she read books three and four to, right when they came out, you know. and she, she holds the series in very high regard up to this day. Uh, she still talks about it, and I think that's a, a reason I want to get back into it and actually finish it so I can talk to her about it. You know, She's been waiting over a decade to talk to me about this stuff. So I decided this year I'd go ahead and pick them up and try again. So that's the story of why I am making this video. Uh, the reason I alluded to earlier, uh, this series has kind of been the topic of some serious debate and derision and ridicule uh, within the fantasy community. Uh, people just trash and disregard these books. Uh, I know that I have been very vocal on this channel about what I call YA garbage. And many of you are probably surprised to see me talking about these, but I guess you either had to read it while you were a little younger or be okay with YA. But I'll just say it like this. YA in the early 2000s was very readable. Reading YA in a post-Stephanie Meyer world is downright unbearable, especially if you read YA fantasy. It is atrocious, at least for me. I don't know. Some nostalgia might be involved here. You know, I have said that this was a time I was really open to something like this. So I wanted to focus on these books a little bit more reading them at this age, you know, where I pump out like a six, seven hundred page book in a week. Um, I think about two and a half of these books I'll be reading for the first time. I don't even know if I got halfway through Eldest the first time, but I don't remember any of it. I remember the first book well, because I think I read it a couple of times. Uh, but, you know, since I read so much high fantasy that can be considered somewhat of a heavy read, I like to I like to litter in something a little lighter to take the ed- edge off if I'm feeling bored or maybe overwhelmed or something. So while I was reading book one of Brent Weeks' Lightbringer, awesome book, by the way, I swear that review is coming, uh, I went ahead and threw Aragon in there while I was going. going and, 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 you know, I read that sucker in about a week of shared time with Lightbringer. Uh, you know, I'd read about, you know, four chapters of Lightbringer, and then I'd read, like, 15 of these because it's such an easy read. But, all right, let's get into the particulars of some of the criticism here. The criticism of the book one, I understand. You know, a lot of people say, oh, it's got too many Star Wars parallels to be enjoyable. It's just a, it's just a remake of Star Wars. It's kind of like the same stuff they say about every movie that has that formula. But it didn't really bother me. But you know why? Because, I mean, almost every traditional fantasy tale uses this formula. Do you know why? Because they almost all use Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey as a template. Yes, even Star Wars did it. Star Wars ripped off Dune anyway. But that's, that's, a, that's beside the point. I don't see any Wheel of Time fans complaining about how Eye of the World is basically Fellowship of the Ring with different names or how Red Rising is The Hunger Games on Mars. You know, authors, they either borrow from what influenced them growing up or they use an age-old template like The Hero's Journey. It's nothing new. 
Half of the MCU movies use Hero's Journey. It's normal. So I expect it with traditional fantasy. That's why it doesn't bother me. From what I have been told by my wife, books two, three, or four, not like that at all. So I get the criticism if you're not used to that. Me, reading reading books that basically have either taken uh, Hero's Journey or have taken Fellowship of the Ring and replaced the characters' names, I'm used to it. I, I understand it. I, obviously, it's an age-old template that works because you still see movies and books these days coming out that still use it. The next criticism I hear is how Paolini is a shit writer. And I just kind of disagree. I mean, is he Brandon Sanderson? No. I mean, who is? Of course he isn't. He's not Robert Jordan. He's not J.R.R. Tolkien. But he was 15 when he started writing this. All you have to do is spend an hour on social media <laughs> and you can see this kid was better writer at 15 than most 40 plus year olds are at basic communication these days. There's a lot of authors that I love that don't have as good of a prose as Paolini does in these books. I mean, it's to the point where I almost feel like it's manufactured hate or, or some of these folks, they haven't even read these books and they just feel like they need to fall in line and hit that echo chamber with it. I mean, is Aragon anything special? God, no, not at all. But I've read worse fantasy books. Hell, I've read worse fantasy books this year. So chill with the bad writer bullshit. He's fine. He's fine. Uh, let's talk about the series a little bit, though. It came out during a time with fantasy readers. They were they were getting a little bit to the point where if they saw a dragon on a fantasy book, they passed. You know, we, we were tired of seeing it. It felt so recycled. And I felt like it kind of stayed that way uh, even through this until, you know, HBO made Game of Thrones and it made everybody just dragon crazy again. So I feel like that might be a, a reason a lot of fancy uh, readers didn't get into this series the first time. Maybe might be showing a little bit of interest now. And honestly, if there are some people, and, and I do not mean this in a derogatory way, not everyone is a strong, super strong reader. Uh, if you're just getting into the fantasy genre, this is a good one you could start with. If you're not ready for Lord of the Rings or something like that, I can see you starting with these, and you might, you might enjoy it. Uh, now, if you're wanting grim, dark, and you're wanting sex, and you're wanting violence and all that. This probably isn't your bag, but you know, you're know you just wanting to dip your toe into something like this that's easy to read. It's probably going to work just fine for you. Uh, so I feel like that might be the reason people didn't get into the series. They were tired of dragons or whatever, or they just assumed they were kids' books. You know, uh, Let me put it this way. If you are a strong reader, they're going to seem like junior high books to you because they are very easy to read, and the book font is kind of big. <laughs> But, you know, I, th I feel like Palin, he constructs a living, breathing world with a lore that's rather deep for what it is. And if you really start to dig into it, I mean, I remember, like Wheel of Time, I had to make a little spreadsheet of who was who at, at first because it was so many characters and so many different, you know, regions and territories. It has maps and stuff. But, you know, if you're not into studying maps and stuff like that, I mean, obviously, I grew up with Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. I'm all about maps. Give me a map, you know, but... Uh, like I said, multitude of characters, locations, beasts, languages, all kinds. Basically, I say it's, a, like I said, a good starter if you aren't quite ready with like Lord of the Rings yet. Personally, I feel like the kid's book thing is a weak point by now because I feel like it's every bit on level with the later Harry Potter books, and I don't hear too many fantasy fans shitting on those these days. They hold those things like they're the Holy Grail. You know, they, they just can't say enough about them. And I haven't read a Harry Potter book since the last one was released. Uh, but I still have love for it, and I still wouldn't mind reading again. And I'm sure if I read it, I'd be like, this is really easy to read, you know. Um, I'll get more into details on my book reviews for each individual story. And, and who knows, I might not end up liking the last two and a half books. I mean, it happens. Uh, really, I just wanted to make this to say, I don't understand the hate for this thing. It's not anywhere. Cl there are much, much worse fantasy series. <coughs> sort of truth that get crazy sales and I don't hear anybody saying anything bad about them. But for some reason, they people just bag on these and I don't get it. Um, you know, my wife and I disagree on plenty of books. So this, you know, I won't lie. If these are bad, I'll admit it. I will make the videos and I'll come in here and watch my Red Rising video. Even if I'm loving book two of Red Rising right now, I was, I was pretty brutal on Red Rising. You know, I'm not going to lie to you about it. But before I go, here's some info on the series. As a whole, the series has sold approximately 30 Five million copies worldwide. Like I said, the first book was self-published by his family and sold over 10,000 copies before it was picked up and reproduced by, by a, a major publication. Like KNOPF, however you say that. 
Uh, the series has been translated into 49 different languages and had one feature film that underperformed at the box office because people actually watched it and told everyone they know not to see it. Since I finished, I, we have this thing that we do uh, where me or my wife will read a book and if there is a movie of it, we'll watch it together right afterwards. Uh, so she's watched a lot of bad Stephen King films. <laughs> and uh, I think I watched uh, Memoirs of the Geisha with her after she read that. Uh, we watched, we just watched Life of Pi together, which I really, really enjoyed. I haven't read it, but she read it. Uh, so uh, I finished Aragon, and of course she already, she had never actually seen the movie because uh, she had heard how bad it was. And I watched it, and whew, time has not been kind to that. I, I felt like, honestly, it followed the story decent, decently enough until about the third act, and then it just went completely off the rails. I actually thought the cast was really good. Jeremy Irons' Braum was terrific. Uh, Safira might not look exactly like what I imagined, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, but I liked all. I liked uh, uh, God. What's his name? The inside is brand Malkovich. John Malkovich. He was uh, he was Galpatorix. I mean, I said I liked most of the cast. It was, it was pretty strong, but whew, man, that movie. It just came out at a bad time, I think. It just because it has not aged well, and you know now that Disney owns the rights to these again, the film rights to these, I would love to see them try this again on like Disney Plus. I think that would make a fantastic Disney Plus series, especially since people are dragon crazy now. And there's no more dragons on TV, although that might not be the same same crowd. But you know, you can make it not necessarily young adult, but you can make it like PG thirteen. I think it would be enjoyable enough. Yeah. Lord of the Rings was PG-13, guys. Now, everything has to be rated R. I know everybody's Game of Thrones crazy right now. They think everything just has to be, like, super just, like, tits and blood everywhere, you know? <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I would really like to see them try again because I feel like this universe is big enough and strong enough that uh, that they can make a, a, a good series. of. Like I said, I could do a whole episode about that movie and what a shit show it was. Uh, but... <laughs> Last year, uh, Chris Bailey, he, he released a short story collection taking place in the same universe after the events of the final book in the series. And since it is a volume one, it does not sound like Paolini is retiring the universe anytime soon. He's doing a book tour right now. Uh, me and my wife are talking about driving up to his book tour. It's a little about three hour drive for us. And we had some stuff we were going to do out there anyway. So I was like, hey, we might go to that because I would love to get these signed. You know, these are first editions. I'd love to get them signed. Um, I don't know, guys. Let me know what you think. I mean, did you did you read these? Did you did you read them? Did you love them? Did you hate them? Did you, anything you want to talk about them? Uh, if you wouldn't touch them with uh, with someone else's eyes, hey, tell me why. Um, tell me if you read them. Tell me if you hated them. Tell me if you loved them. Whatever. We're here to talk about these things. Share some some share some memories in the comments. You know, but try to keep it spoiler free. Like I said, I'll be posting the reviews for each individual book on the channel, like I do with all my books, and those will be full of spoilers. So look for those soon. So if you want to just go on and on about you know what plot lines, but Please, I remember, I haven't read books, the second half of book two, three, or four, so try to be easy on the spoilers there. Uh, the best way to uh, catch out those videos is to help me out by hitting that subscribe button. Uh, the channel is growing, and we're slowly climbing towards that small goal of 500 subscribers so I can beat YouTube's shitty algorithm that won't allow my videos to pop up in a basic search. So if you like this video, please subscribe. Check out the other content on the channel. I do a book review or a Let's Discuss segment every single week. Sometimes more than one a week. I think this is like my third video this week. And we do a live show here usually every week unless things are slow. Then we do it only a couple times a month where we talk about everything relevant that happened in geek pop culture media over the week. So please hit subscribe, show this to your friends, and I will talk to you guys soon.